And in this one, I'm gonna be doing a chicken gremolata with just some sort of grain salad. You might click this video because you wanna see how to prep meals for the week. Now, some benefits to doing this. For one, saves money, saves time. This could be healthy eating depending on what you make. Today actually is pretty healthy. As I begin, I am starting with a carefully curated selection of parsley and lemon to create a delicately flavored and visually stunning garnish known as gremolata. I run a strip zester over the surface of my lemons, coaxing out thin strips that add both a pop of color and a citrus zing to the dish. The zester also ensures that the zest is distributed evenly, giving you a clean and polished final product. Next, I take my parsley and I remove the stems before chopping it up rough yet still refined and consistent. Then I set this aside to be combined with the other ingredients. Finally, I take my garlic, chop it up into a roughly chopped texture to add the perfect hint of pungency to my gremolata. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna marry all of this together and give it a little choppy chop. If you wanted to, you could just throw this all in a food processor instead of chopping it. Whichever way you wanna go. I lay my hands on a brown paper bag filled to the brim with a succulent plump chicken. At a mere $6.41, this bird will serve a week's worth of meals. Okay, so look, first I take the flap of skin located here. I make a small incision before delicately tucking the other leg into the opening, creating a perfectly trussed bird. Next, I generously coat the bird with my earlier prepared gremolata that's gonna infuse it with the bold and complex flavors. I had previously seasoned the bird with salt. I forgot to record it, so sorry about that. Then I place the bird into an oven that is preset to 375 degrees Fahrenheit until it reaches an internal temp of 165 degrees Fahrenheit between the thigh and the breast. At this point, I meticulously remove the meat from the bones, making sure to save the bones for future use. I combine the white and the brown meat, chop it up. I create a stock with those bones that are gonna be used just to showcase my commitment to utilizing the entire bird. I then set the meat onto a tray, toss it in the fridge to be cooled down completely for later on. Okay, for my grains, I'm gonna take a pot. I'm gonna be using farro. You start off with boiling water. Then you toss the farro into the boiling water, not like your typical rice making. Then we slow that down to a simmer after it comes up to a boil. So I'm just gonna lower it to around medium high heat. Let that go in the salted water until it's fully cooked through for around 30 minutes or so is what I did, if you wanna follow that. Then I just drain off the excess water. Like I said, it's not cooked like normal rice. And then we just drain that off, put that onto a tray lined with parchment and we let that cool. Now. This is just a food safety thing. You should always cool off your stuff completely before marrying it with something else or even putting it in a closed container. Never close something when it's hot. That's how you can grow bacteria, get sick, food poisoning, not good. So cheat tray into the fridge. Next up is the lentils. Toss around two cups of lentils into the pot, followed by a quart of that chicken stock. Yes, I'm utilizing the whole bird here. See all these little floaters at the top? All you gotta do is just scoop them up and toss them out because they will not cook. Now, same thing. I'm just gonna let the lentils simmer until they're cooked through and ready to go. And then I strain them off. Of course, save that chicken stock if you want after they're strained off, because you can use that to heat up the food if you want later on. And then I set that aside onto a sheet pan or a tray and let that cool completely in the fridge. There you go. Now, next up, I delicately slice shallots for the vinaigrette. So it's just gonna be shallot, some mustard, 
and then rice wine vinegar. Then I'll just give that a smooth little blitz and then I'll slowly drizzle in the extra virgin olive oil to create an emulsification that is gonna be very flavorful and add a nice acidic pop to this dish. Season it to taste with salt and pepper. Now once everything is cooled, we can go ahead and combine our grains with our lentils. This is gonna be a very delicious salad. I'm just gonna combine it with salt and of course pepper to taste, optional, and then we have our grain salad. This is a high protein option for your protein bowl if you like lentils have. Okay, so now pork containers. If you never worked in a restaurant, you might recognize them for, you might recognize them from your to-go pho or ramen spots, but typically comes in a quart or a pint. I love using these for everything. I even drink water out of this because I can track my gallons per day. Anyways, these are great because you can reuse them. You just give them a little rinsey rinse with some soapy water. And yeah, so what I'll do is I'll put my grains in here, my protein in here, a little stack, a little lid on top, and there we go. Then I just portion it out into each little container, top it off with some arugula or some sort of greenery that you like for your salad, and there you go. You don't need to use quart containers. If you want, you can use anything else. Then I get a separate little thing of chicken and I put that on top. This is the beauty of the core containers. They just stack perfectly. I just put it all on top, ready to go. And then I top it with a lid and boom, there we have it. There's our meal prep for the week. Also, don't forget to join the Discord. Link is in the description. Also, the entire recipe is on my website, cooknamemat.com in the description. Okay, so now this is it. You keep these in the fridge, put a date label on there and look, pop your chicken in. And then we have our vinaigrette that we made. You could do whatever you want. 